Wait. I hear something ominous in the wind. Oh! This must be another one of those sounds that only you can hear. As sketchy as that whole thing seems, you did put it to good use when we were chasing down that vision thief at Beto's tournament, so... Hmm... Now I'm picking up a strong scent in addition to the sound. It's right around here somewhere. But... there's nothing here! It's gone now. But I can still sense the direction it left in. It felt very much like that ancient presence in Inazuma. The remnants of the Tatarigami. Indeed. But this unexpected spring of inauspicious energy may prove to be of benefit to our investigation. We should remain vigilant and approach slowly. Huh! So it's an underground warehouse! The force is definitely coming from down below. The source of the Tatarigami energy has long since left this place. But the residue it left behind still hasn't dissipated completely. Judging from the concentration, I would have to conclude that the Tatarigami source resided here for a very long time. Mrs. Nagato said her husband used to hang around the warehouse by himself a lot. It could well be that he was already under the influence of Tatarigami energy at that time. From what I've been told, Tatarigami does not turn all upon whom it preys into violent monsters, but most will develop a stubborn streak upon being exposed to the Tatarigami's unfulfilled will. Their interests become fanatical obsessions. Mr. Nagato had an interest in collecting to begin with. The influence of Tatarigami could explain why he became an obsessive hoarder, amassing more and more possessions, even as he put himself in grave debt. Um, so what should we do now? Go down and take a look? Step back. I'll open the door and take a look inside. If we don't open this door, we can move no closer to the truth. You needn't worry. Both of us have faced far greater dangers than this. Relatively speaking, the risk here is trivial. Huh. Hmm. What's down there? Everything's buried in debris. I can't see anything. It looks like the fire caused a cave-in, reducing the entire warehouse to rubble. That was too scary! Paimon was so sure that the warehouse boogeyman was about to jump out at us! All we can do now is keep searching in the direction that the Tatarigami energy source left this place. Two ordinary humans, entangled with the Tatarigami. I fear much misfortune has already befallen them. Yes, let's go. If nothing else, it's vital that we find out where this Tatarigami energy is coming from. Quiet your mind and focus on what you sense around you. Perhaps you, too, will perceive its ominous presence in the wind. From this point, the trail appears to split into two. The main source of the Tatarigami energy continued on into the distance, but a small portion remained here and seems to be dissipating slowly. <laughs> Quite possibly. Let's search the area. It, it's... Ooh, look at this red stuff! Well, what is it? By the looks of it, a letter written on a piece of torn clothing. The ink is bone dry. It must have been written quite some time ago. Well, let's take a look.
Hmm. According to this letter, a conflict arose because Amenoma Yuya wanted to seize a blade belonging to Mr. Nagato. Yuya started the fire that destroyed the warehouse and wounded Mr. Nagato in the fight. Mr. Nagato kept chase as long as he could, eventually stopping here to write this letter when his strength gave out. So, where is he? He was not only mortally wounded, but also under the heavy influence of Tatarigami. Add to that the fact that its aura seems to have attracted a horde of monsters, and... I'm afraid he may no longer be with us. Whatever traces there may have been of his fate beyond after this point, they've since been disturbed by the hilly churls. There's nothing more for us to find here. Yes. Right now, we need to uncover some more important truths. If Amenoma Yuya is attacking other people indiscriminately, then the longer we take to find him, the more people risk meeting the same tragic end. Right! So let's get moving! I wouldn't be surprised if he, too, fell prey to the influence of the Tatarigami. For a practitioner of the martial arts, the easiest desire to inflame would be their pursuit of further power and skill. All the clues that at first seemed disparate and disconnected, it seems that now we know the thread that runs between them. I have a hypothesis that, if it's correct, not only explains the series of events leading to the two men's disappearance, but also zeroes in on the attacker's identity. Wait! You figured it out? So these two cases are connected after all? I believe so. But it's something of an outlandish idea. I will only be able to confirm my suspicions once we've met him in person. On with the search. We must stay vigilant. At any point now, we may find ourselves in danger. Hmm. He seems to have stayed here for a long time. Why here? Is there anything special about this place? I'm not sure. But on closer examination, I sense that the aura may have lingered here at several different points in time. Show yourself! It's no use hiding anymore! Hmm. Kaede Harakazua. It's you, at last. Aha! So it is the same guy from before! What's your problem, huh? What could you possibly have against Kazua? Indeed, there should be no enmity between us if it is Amenoma Yuya that stands before us. But what if instead of facing Amenoma Yuya, we are in fact facing the blade in his hand? Now that you mention it, it is giving off a strange light. Whoa, whoa! Surely you don't mean... Are you serious? Tatarigami energy often lodges itself within physical objects, then works to subtly affect any living organisms in its vicinity. The blade has resided in Mr. Nagato's warehouse for many years, affecting his state of mind, and more recently using the sail as a means to affect, or rather, as a means to occupy, Amenoma Yuya's body. Hmm. You're sharper than I thought. You've already deduced the truth of the matter. Many, many years ago, I was forged by a famed bladesmith of the Ishin tradition. I was his pride and joy. In me, he placed all his hopes and dreams. As a descendant of the Kaidehara clan, you should be able to guess our greatest regret. I presume it has something to do with the Raiden Gokaden. Indeed. At that point in time, he failed to live up to the Raiden Shogun's expectations. In the end, all he could do was to flee the nation by sea on a ship bound for Snezhnaya. He was a bladesmith of great renown, a master of his craft. There was nothing that he could not accomplish. All he needed was more time and a little faith. And sure enough, in the end, he achieved what he had set out to do. 
All of his life's work, his wisdom, his skill, it culminated in his creation of me. He not only bestowed upon me the greatest of strength, but also endowed me with a consciousness of my own. In her conceit, the Raiden Shogun lost not only the single most perfect blade in the entire world, but also an irreplaceable achievement in the art of blade forging. So... swords can become conscious and control people? The people of the time in which I was born never believed I had that kind of power. They saw me as a mere blade, a sharp and well-crafted one, but in all other respects an ordinary weapon. Hmm. But that gave me the opportunity to take action. After the death of my creator, I decided to leave Snezhnaya and began my long quest to return to the distant land of Inazuma. Moving from one person to the next, I controlled the minds of countless hosts along the way, each bringing me one step closer to my ancestral home. I seek but one thing, to face the full force of the Raiden Shogun's blade and prove my power, the might of Isin art! Ah, so Amenoma Yuya was not your first victim. Tell me, what happens to those you've possessed when you've finished using them? My hosts? Who cares what happens to them? They are but tools that serve my mission. When they got tired, or injured, or unusable, I hopped to the next one in line. All I needed them for was to take me back to Inazuma. You're awful! After I returned to Inazuma, I decided to bide my time in Nagato's warehouse until Amenoma Yuya handed himself over to me on a silver platter. At long last, I'm approaching my journey's destination. By Amenoma Yuya's body, I have found you, and by your hand, I shall defeat the Raiden Shogun! Kaede Harakazuha, you stood against the Raiden Shogun's Muso no Hitotachi. There can be no other to serve as my host for what is to come. Now, give your body over to me! Do not stand in my way, or I will strike you down too! Your bluff's fooling no one! You've lost! Lost? I can never lose. It is this body that has reached its limit, nothing more. Even if you defeat me here, the one who falls will not be me, but this man. He is but a puppet that can be replaced. I can take a new vessel at will. The end result is the same! I will end this wretch's life before you can lift a finger! And even if I were to lose my physical form, it is but a small setback. My consciousness shall endure by any means necessary and any medium available, I shall return and fulfill my destiny! Your fighting style, it is indeed the forms of Ishin art. But from your movements, I sense only hatred and arrogance, as well as a thinly veiled mania and despair. Really? You can tell all that just from his moves? As I've mentioned before, the forms of Ishin art convey the user's thoughts and feelings. Since the blade is currently possessing Aminoma Yuya's body, its movements express the innermost thoughts of the blade. If you ask me, the mania is probably due to your desperate, single-minded ambition. You believe I am your only hope. Are you trying to claim that I am helpless without you? On his deathbed, he passed to me all of Ishin Art's secrets. The little that you know barely scratches the surface. In that regard, why would I ever need your help? Because all of that is in the past. I've been wondering why you've not caused more trouble in all the years that you've been in Inazuma. If you are indeed a cursed blade that can possess its owner. Now that I've seen inside your mind, everything finally makes sense. You weren't biding your time. 
you were trapped. Hmm. After all the time that's passed, you have grown weak. To the point that you are now unable to acquire a new host without making physical contact. Oh, that's right! Paima remembers now! Mr. Nagato had a habit of never touching his collectibles! Only when Mr. Nagato witnessed his wife's distress and decided to sell his collectibles did you finally have an opportunity to reach out to Aminoma Yuya and make your escape. And what of it? Well, that brings me to my second point. There's a despair in you that is so strong it threatens to overwhelm you. You were determined to fulfill your Maker's ambition whatever the cost. But this ambition is too grand and too heavy for you to bear. Each step you have taken has come at a great cost. I think you realized your limitations long ago. The more you clenched your teeth and pressed forward, the greater your fear of losing everything you had achieved grew, and the more you wished to run from the truth. But the way I see it, what began as an ambition has long since become a delusional fantasy. What would you know about any of this? I'm just one step away from achieving my goal! You returned to Inazuma to prove the unparalleled brilliance of Ishin art. But to make this arduous journey, you committed countless atrocities and showed a blatant disregard for human life. Even if you were to sever that divine light, is this truly the outcome that your maker would have desired? You... Sure, you inherited the secrets of Ishin art. But even as you made your journey to honor this legacy, you treated the ones who wielded you as mere tools to do your bidding. How could you possibly unleash the full potential of Ishin art when you act in perfect discordance with the principle of harmony between a blade and its bearer? Silence, you blabbering fool! I must achieve my goal. This was his life's dream, and the very purpose for which I was brought into being! I will concede that you are most perceptive. You see my predicament clearly. But you also underestimate my resolve. And you should face reality. Easy for you to say. Facing reality offers me nothing. I have no need of anything that would stand in my way. Not hesitation, not self-reflection, and certainly not your so-called reality. It is pointless to argue further, descendant of the Kaidahara clan. If you wish to save this man, then offer me your body in exchange. How stubbornly you stick to your wayward path. I do not believe for a second that you can challenge the almighty Shogun in your current state. So let us make a bet, and I will put your strength to the test. What? Surely you're not planning to agree to his demands! Very well. Then find yourself some enemies with whom you wish to cross blades. A taste of my power will more than convince you. Once we have dealt with them, we shall proceed to Tenshukaku. And as for your end of the bargain, if you lose, you must release Amenoma Yuya from your control. I accept. Don't do this, Kazuha! <laughs> this is the only way to save Amenoma Yuya. If we don't do this, he'll forever be the Blade's puppet. The Cursed Blade's strength is currently very weak, and I sense he's hesitating. This suggests his heart is still not completely devoid of honor. The power of the Tatarigami lies in intensifying existing obsessions. This is the reason Mr. Nagato and Aminoma Yuya fell prey to it. Since I don't have any similar kinds of obsessions, I should be able to put up some resistance for a while. But even... Even if things take a turn for the worse, I still have you both here with me. We have a chance here to save an innocent victim. I am willing to accept the risks entailed. 
Your disdain for me betrays your woeful ignorance. I agreed to this bet because there are things I wish to learn, too. Now, take me in your hand. I'm okay. I felt a little dizzy at first, but only for a moment. It's all right. So far, this was as I expected. I will. Thank you. What should we do next? Have you got a plan, Kazuha? We find some enemies. Although this blade has endured much turmoil, it probably hasn't experienced many real fights. If a blade built for Ishin art cannot enter a state of harmony between blade and bearer, it cannot unleash its true power. If he wants to avoid reality, then we need to fight until he has no choice but to face it. He shouldn't last long in an intense combat situation. Wait a minute! Paimon remembers hearing about something from the Adventurer's Guild! Since the Takasukasa clan abandoned that secret base, it's been held by Ronin ever since! Ah, huh. alright. Please lead the way. What about Amanoma Yuya? What should we do with him? The blade says he'll let Amanoma Yuya trail us silently. Although he hasn't regained his own consciousness yet, he is not in any immediate danger. This is a good idea. It's a pretty treacherous journey. Okay, fine. Just be careful. How are you feeling? You okay? I'm all right. The blade is performing largely as I expected. Having gone so long without proper use and maintenance, it's become very difficult to use. Though he's making every effort to persevere, I do not think he can last much longer. Hmm. Something else on your mind? How strange. Rather than trying to control me, he is instead trying to match my fighting rhythm. Let's keep going. I can sense that his strength is slowly fading away. The blade is becoming more and more difficult for me to wield. He cannot hold out much longer. If he keeps persisting, he will likely break apart at any moment. But what would that do to Amanoma Yuya? I will be careful with it. He also says he does not have any plans to give up easily. He's still trying to achieve his goal. Are you okay? It looked like you were really struggling the entire fight! Yes. And it looks like he's reached his limit. The sheen's grown a bit dimmer again. It doesn't look anywhere near as impressive as it did at the start. Perhaps this time, we'll finally have a chance to see his true form. True form? What are you talking about? Uh, huh? What the? Is this the same blade as before? It looks like a piece of junk! If you choose to continue in the state you're in, you wouldn't even be able to beat Samurai and Kairagi, much less the Almighty Shogun. Maybe you did truly wield power to rival the Shogun's light when first forged, but the long journey from Snezhnaya back to Inazuma has left you battered and broken. It barely needs stating anymore. Your ambition is a flight of fancy. I finally figured out why it was that you agreed to my bet. You wanted to reach a state of harmony with me. For perhaps then you would still be able to wield commendable power. But regrettably, we are nothing alike. I will never understand your obstinacy and cruelty, nor can I empathize with the one who made you. The only one who truly understood you 
had already passed away by the time you were born. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? Here they are! Take them down! <laughs> Where do they keep coming from? Yup, yup! We can help this time! Don't worry. I'll use my own blade. It's just more of the same. better with your own sword. <sighs> you are a true Kaedehara in flesh and in spirit. Though we fought briefly together, you have seen me for who I really am. No one knew anything of my story throughout my travels, nor did I tell it to anyone. You are the first person to know the truth. I thought that if I could achieve Ishin harmony with you, Perhaps there would still be a ray of hope for me. But in this too you have failed. Indeed. No matter how hard I tried, I could not attain that perfect harmony that your personal blade does with you. Too much time has passed. My physical state is poor and without proper maintenance. I can only disguise my true appearance behind an outer sheen. Yours is the blade that took on the Muso no Hitotachi. And what a magnificent blade it is. Perhaps I shall never reach that level of glory. Actually, this is just a generic blade that I picked up during my travels in Liyue. What? Forging and maintenance are both important for a blade, but they are not everything. This blade has traveled the land with me for many years, and we have formed a close bond during that time. Plus, in the moment that I most needed it, I received aid from another power. Skill, blade, determination, and desire. All these must be aligned in the practice of Ishin art. <sighs> there is something else I must tell you. Though your maker may not have been aware, your ability to possess your own consciousness derived from the power of the Tatarigami. Tatarigami is a malevolence from the ancient past. It is the source of your mania and savagery. Though you tried to cooperate with me while I was wielding you, the part of you driven by Tatarigami was constantly trying to seize control of my body. I sensed it, but I couldn't change it. It is an integral part of my consciousness. I resisted its temptations because I wanted to save Amenoma Yuya. But I do not know whether you yourself have any intention of trying to fight it. I feel a great sense of regret for you. Since you embarked on a journey bound for a destination you were destined never to reach. The moment you embarked on this journey, you lost the only person who could have ever unleashed your true potential. And yet there was no way for you to turn your back on his ambition. You have known this for a long time. It is the true source of your despair. He gave me everything. My life, my form, my consciousness and purpose. How could I possibly deny him his wish? I said to him, do not worry. From here on, I shall forge your legacy. How could I go back on my word? Aww. I believe our bet is now settled. I have nothing further to say. Where are you going, Kazuha? He now has neither the ability nor the motivation to cause further harm. Let's give him some time to reflect on things. When I touched the hilt for the first time, it's as if I was transported to a strange dimension. It was somewhere I've never been. A bladesmith lay quietly on the bed, his frail face barely visible under the moonlight. His breaths were weak and his life near its end. A newly forged blade lay by his side, listening attentively to his final words. Wow, that was the blade's memory, wasn't it? Indeed. 
While in exile in Snezhnaya, the bladesmith eventually learned the truth behind everything that had happened. The Ishin art had been dealt a devastating blow by the desertion of its best smiths. He spent the rest of his life in the forge, not to vent his frustration and hatred, but to atone for his actions. He felt intense regret at being tricked by the Fatui, but he could never again return to his homeland. His sole wish was to one day return his single, proudest creation back to the land of his birth. So he instructed this sentient blade to find a way back to Inazuma, no matter how long or how hard the journey. But he never wished to rival the gods. All he wanted to show was that they once shone brilliantly as Blade and Smith. That they were still worthy of being trusted. So that's the true story. But after that, the blacksmith's intentions were worked by the Tatari Gami, slowly turning his proud creation into the cursed Blade of today. Right. I believe the bladesmith might never have known that the power he worked with was that of the Tatarigami. The hatred within that power is what sent the blade down its ill-fated path. This blade has committed unforgivable atrocities, but only because it lost its original master. No one was there to correct its errors when it was losing its way. <sighs> Shame it's too late now. Yes, it is too late. Time would not wait or stop because of his determination. While the world moved on, his ambition remained stubbornly stuck at that fleeting moment at the dawn of his journey. He seems to have calmed down, though. Let's go and check in. <sighs> when I look back at the past... I can remember the day of my forging like it was just yesterday. I once told him that I would pay any price to fulfill his wishes. Such was the debt I owed to him for giving me the gift of consciousness. But darkness and slaughter numb the mind. Over time, I lost sight of the difference between gratitude and grudge. Not only did I fail to fulfill his ambition, I also defiled it. You are finally seeing reality clearly. Since we agreed to the terms of the bet, I will honor the agreement and release Amenoma Yuya. But I still cannot bring myself to forsake his ambition. It is the entire purpose for my existence. So, may I ask you to help me fulfill the ambitions of myself and my creator? Mister? It has to be done in this order. At least hear what I have to say. And if you don't agree, I will still release Amenoma Yuya as promised. My physical form, as well as the knowledge I possess, should still be of some value to you. His attitude has grown a lot milder. What do you think, Kazuha? Should we give him a chance? Let's hear it. Thank you all. When I was first forged, my maker was already terminally ill. He told me that he had wanted me to have the grandest opening battle. Alas, after that, he never rose from his sickbed again. Nor have I ever had the chance to prove myself in battle sense. My fights were devoid of any noble meaning. They were merely the next step in my never-ending journey. The next in a long line of transgressions. You are a fine warrior. I would like to request your hand in battle and experience a true duel between samurai. Oh? And who would be the opponent? I will release Amenoma Yuya and restore his consciousness. Perhaps after that... You can convince him to commit to a fight with you. He must have plenty of reasons to both hate me and desire a good fight. Understood. 
Then let's start by waking him up and seeing if he has the stamina and will to fight. I see. He used my body to inflict harm on others. I utterly despise him and his actions. But since he stayed true to your agreement by releasing me, he must still have some remaining semblance of honor. If a duel can help to set this state of affairs in order, I am willing to put myself forward. I do not wish to be a mere victim in this story. There's no need to worry. We'll vouch for your innocence to the Terrio Commission. Thanks for your help. Who knows how this would have ended without your intervention. All right, then let's move on. More Ronin could appear at any moment. We can't stay here. In any case, for a final duel, I think we should aim for a greater sense of ceremony. This reminds Paimon a bit of the Crux Crash! Yep, we still can't let our guard down. Even now, Paimon has a sneaking suspicion that Blade hasn't told us everything. Still, even if he's way past the point of redemption, it's hard not to feel a teensy bit sorry for him. Are you ready? Ready? Okay. All right then. Successor of Ishin Art, Kaidahara Kazuha. Successor of Amenoma Art, Amenome Yuya. Honored to cross blades with you. It is my honor also. Thank you for the experience. Although he appears battered and broken, in your hands it seems he's regained a glimmer of brilliance. His sense of savage cruelty has completely faded away. But that same sense of determination remains strong. You also fought well. I'm sure he relished the experience. There are a few things that I shall leave him to tell you himself. I must apologize to you for all that has transpired. You need not seek my forgiveness, nor do I have the right to forgive you on your victim's behalf. It is too late for all of that. I do not wish for forgiveness. I only hope that you will see my transgressions as mine alone and not let them stain the legacy of Ishin art. I strayed far from the straight and narrow path, but the Ishin art still has a worthy successor in Kaede Hara Kazuha. I beseech you, please understand this. Yes, I too trust Mr. Kaede Hara to do the right thing. Thank you, successor of Amenoma art. This blade has also told me that he has another wish. He would like to visit the Amenoma smithy. Maybe we can go back there together. What does he want to go there for? I am not sure, but I think that all this is about to come to an end. Oh, it's Yuya! You have returned! I am sorry to have troubled you. It's all thanks to them that I was able to return safely. A prized Ishin blade, turned weapon that controls the human mind. <sighs> Considering their forging philosophy, this was indeed within the realm of possibility. This is a great pity. But I have some good news as well. Ryuji from the Bantan Sango Detective Agency tells me that they've found the missing Mr. Nagato. Really? Is he okay? Yes. Badly wounded. But he will live. And now that Yuya is back, it seems like the final ending to this story is a happy one after all. I think I know what you want to do. What's wrong, Kazuha? Is the blade whispering in your ear again? Yes. He said he wants to take control of me for a brief moment. What? No way! Hasn't it learned its lesson? He tells me that he's thought of another way to fulfill his Maker's wish. And he assures me that he won't use my body for anything nefarious. I have decided... to let him do it. You... but... he... Ugh. Guess there's nothing we can say to change your mind, huh? Thank you. 
I will explain my reasons later. Okay. I am ready. Let us begin. Please, stay true to your promise. My power is almost spent. Without him, my eventual demise is inevitable. But if I abandon the future to give everything I have in this moment, my physical form can be forged anew. Everything? You mean... Yes. The cost is my entire consciousness. <laughs> There's nothing that I can accomplish now. But there's still a chance for Ishin art. Once remade, I will be a valuable resource for your studies. Ishin lives on, and its finest hour is yet to come. Even if I am not the one to prove its might to the Shogun, as long as it is an Ishin blade, crafted by Kaedehara hands, it will still fulfill his final wish. Thank you, son of the Kaedehara clan. Over the years, my real name has been forgotten by all. I'm ashamed to utter it, yet it remains strong in my mind. Kagotsurube Ishin. This name is now yours. Rest in peace. So... That's why he said it had to be done in that order. His consciousness will disappear forever after fulfilling the bladesmith's wish! Kagotsurube Ishin. It was the first time I ever heard his name. It seems like deep down he disapproved of his own actions, and thus chose to bury this name deep within his heart. Only in the final moments, before his consciousness faded, was he willing to entrust it to another. Seems like he really, really wanted to fulfill his Maker's wish. The same fervent ambition that gave him the motivation to keep going forward also fueled the stubborn determination that blinded him to the path ahead. Speaking for myself, I'd rather see him recognize and atone for his mistakes than see him punished for them. I understand. Perhaps this is a flaw in my personality. I've always been captivated by grand aspirations. Hearing his wish to rival the divine light touched something inside of me just as the sight of those who fought to repeal the Vision Hunt Decree did. Your quest to face the gods and trace your sibling inspires me in the same way. After everything I've seen, perhaps these pursuits fascinate me a little more than they should. Oh, Kazuha! I will continue to support you from this point on. Know that you will have my assistance whenever you need it. Wait, shouldn't we also go update Kujo Kamaji? Oh, you're right. We need to tell him about the findings of our investigation. And it's also time to give him a response to the offer he made me. Ah, you've returned. I hear that the issue has been resolved. Uh, though this was a treacherous investigation indeed, we're most fortunate that no lives were lost. The Tenryo Commission has already attended to the danger at the warehouse. The investigation into Amanoma Yuya should conclude soon. I do not believe he will be charged with any crime. Wow! You sure kept your ear to the ground! Then we needn't recount all the details again. Now, as to your earlier offer, I wish to give you my answer. Please, take a look at this blade. What's this? Kagotsurube Ishin. A weapon crafted using a long-lost blade-forging art of the Kaidahara clan. By means of a series of fortuitous events, I was able to recover and restore him. 
I also promised him that I will continue to study and pass on the secrets of Ishin art. And so, it looks like I will likely continue with my journey across the nations, learning more about this blade as I go. Uh, I see. I understand. The Kaidahara clan has always been a family of bladesmiths, so it is only proper for me to continue on this path. Were I to accept your goodwill, I may find myself embroiled in conflicts between the Shogunate and Sangonomiya. That would not suit me. Ah, uh, you misunderstand. That was most certainly not our intent. I am aware, but I still desire to continue walking my own path. Very well. I can understand. Then let's pretend this offer was never raised. However, if you should ever change your mind or find yourself in need of the Shogunate's assistance, please do not hesitate to inform me. Great. Thank you for your generosity. Where will you travel to next, Kazuha? Hmm. I'll probably take to the seas with Captain Beto again for now. As for my next destination, let's see where the wind takes me. Yeah. <laughs>